Near Innsbruck stands a monument to perversity. Castle Ambras, occupied during the 16th century by Archduke Ferdinand, harbors one of the most terrifying portrait galleries in the civilized world. Painted from life, these grotesqueries reflect the offbeat tastes of the collector. In this gallery of the bizarre are images of those maimed in battle or deformed by nature. One portrait seems curiously out of place. It's that of a king who ruled not in Austria, but in a land to the east, now called Romania. His brutality earned him the nickname Vlad the Impaler. His real name was Vlad Dracula. Centuries later, Dracula's name and the land he lived in would be used to create a character so unredeemed by human qualities that we still recoil in fascination at his fiendish exploits. information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. Horror has a special fascination for many, and filmmakers have done their best to exploit that fascination. Audiences have come to know Dracula well, They've seen him portrayed on the screen for more than 50 years. There's the black cape, the jutting canine teeth, the demonic eyes and nocturnal lust for blood. But what of the truth behind the legend? <coughs> Romania is a land rich in romantic folklore and legends. The tale of the evil Count Dracula is not one of them. The rugged mountains and hidden valleys breed their own mythology. Called Romania's Olympus, Mount Ceflau rises nearly 6,000 feet in the Carpathian Mountains. In pre-Christian times, it was believed to be the home of the gods. Each year, even now, on the first Sunday of August, a pagan ritual is reenacted. Thousands gather by torchlight on Cheflau's shadowy summit to celebrate friendship and love and the renewal of life. During the rest of the year, Cheflau yields its mysteries to few men. Dr. George Yakumi is a surgeon who climbs mainly for adventure. The other, a shepherd, who has spent a lifetime in these alpine meadows. Both know the mountain and its hidden places. Both respect its awesome symbolic power. Though one is a simple peasant, the other a man of science, the mountain has given them a strong bond of friendship. They exchange stories of ancient superstitions of dark, frightening corners where no one has yet ventured. The music seems to recall a distant time in these mountains when ghosts inhabited Cheflau. Legends tell of a 15th century nobleman named Boudou who loved the king's daughter, Anna. When he was killed in battle, 
The grief-stricken Anna asked the powerful witch to bring her lover back from the dead. The witch raised Voodoo from his grave, but as a ghost. While passing over Cheflau, Voodoo's ghost was struck by the rising sun, turning him into rock. Till this day, on Cheflau's brooding summit, there is a stone megalith known as Voodoo's Tower. In the nightmare world of superstition and fear, it often becomes difficult to separate fact from fiction. The familiar story of Dracula is a case in point. Since its publication in 1897, Bram Stoker's classic novel of gothic horror has been read or performed almost continuously. Yet few are aware that the character was based on a real prince of darkness, whose deeds are perhaps more shocking and more terrifying than those of the fictional vampire. Transylvania, stronghold of legend, a place dimly recalled from horror movies as a dark, forbidding region cloaked in superstition and terror. Here, according to popular myth, live the undead, the dreaded vampires who thrive on human blood. Dracula, written by Bram Stoker, perpetuated one myth that has endured for nearly a century. Along Transylvania's southern perimeter stands Castle Braun. In appearance, it corresponds to the castle described in the novel as the home of the bloodthirsty Count. Haunted by his own childhood visions of threatening forests and spooky castles, Bram Stoker created an eerie world that became more than just a horrifying journey into the supernatural. It was also a parable of Victorian repression. Locked inside Castle Dracula's dark walls were hidden passions and secret longings which erupted into violence and terror. The German film classic Nosferatu comes closer to capturing the mood of the original novel than the later interpretation of Bela Lugosi. In the book, the hero Jonathan Harker describes his first encounter with Dracula. Holding out his hand, he grasped mine with a strength which made me wince, an effect which was not lessened by the fact that it seemed as cold as ice. Taking Transylvania, a remote place he'd heard of but never seen, as his setting, Stoker evoked chilling images of the living dead. Under the shroud of darkness, the fiendish apparition risen from its coffin begins to stalk its human prey. The nightmare becomes reality. The unknown clutches at our throats. The shrieking of the vampire bat evokes the horror of Dracula. Night flying hunters, they prey mainly on cattle. But one strange fact stands out. The vampire bat is found only in Mexico and South America. Modern Romanians stubbornly deny the existence of vampire legends in Transylvanian peasant lore. To them, Dracula is the name of a 15th century tyrant whose story, too, was written in blood.